All right, here we go. Tesla talk. Let's talk. Come on, guys. Did you see that? Did you see that? This is why SpaceX is at the top of the list when it comes to innovation. This is ridiculous. All right. These are reusable rockets. All right. These are the Falcons. They launch up into space. They send the payload and they actually land back on Earth. They're not disposed of like previously when it was just trash after the actual launch. And so this is the innovation that's taking place in the United States of America. This is why I think it's very imperative that we highlight the innovation. This is why we need to actually highlight engineers. We need to push people into STEM because this is marvelous. This is almost looking like a sci-fi movie. This, I mean, most people are like, yo, this can't be real. This can't be life. But it is. It definitely is life. And so massive amounts of gains going on in Tesla across the board. Let's get to the next one. All right, here we go. And you work seven hours a week and you fly all over the place and you go to these meetings constantly and then people constantly criticize you for everything. Why do you do this? Why are you still working? What are you doing here? I think they, what I'm working on has, important, has an important effect on the future. In the case of Tesla, I think it's fair to say that Tesla has significantly accelerated the advent of sustainable energy. Before Tesla, no one was doing electric cars. And now, as a result of, of Tesla, I think almost every major car company in the world has is, going, is building electric cars, and that's I think that's that's a pretty big deal. But there's still a long way to go to transition the world to a sustainable energy economy, and so we we still have a lot of work ahead of us at Tesla. But that's our goal there. And then for SpaceX, I think it's important for the future to be exciting and for humanity's existence to be ensured over the long term. I think we must become a multi-planet species and a space-bearing civilization. They're 51. All right. And All right. So there's two parts, definitely in the energy. And so I'm more so focused on the science, not so much the politics, not so much geopolitics, not so much ideology. And listen, utilizing the sun as a natural resource in order to utilize and generate and distribute energy makes sense. It's just more effective and efficient once we are able to completely mechanize the sun and the energy coming from the sun, not only sun, possibly wind, turbine, water, which they call wave, tidal, geothermal, like, okay, guys. But the main point is to take the resources from the sun and utilize that for energy. And as long as it's being done via science, dope products, and services and goods. I'm completely fine. All right. I think it does get out of hand when people are pushing it on you from a moral perspective, but okay. Some people are going to intertwine the moral. Maybe some people are going to be bringing a religious aspect to it. Okay, guys, I'm completely fine with that, but everybody else is not on board with it. Okay. Completely fine. But we should be aboard with efficiency, making things more effective and efficient. And that's what not, Tesla does, but also SpaceX. There's two parts. Remember, one was energy, whether it's EVs, whether it's the power wall, the mega packs, there's massive amounts of benefits and pros that come from Tesla as an overall company that stretches far beyond electric vehicles. Now let's move over to the actual SpaceX. I think it's pretty exciting that we actually have something in the crosshairs on the horizon. And something like space exploration is essential. Look, guys, we don't want to be sitting on rock, sitting on Earth, and then we got to deal with the Armageddon or what, what was that one movie? Independence Day, Impact Day, whatever, <laughs> where the media is coming. Don't look up all these shows, right? All these movies. 
We don't want to have to deal with that and then try to figure out how we're going to scramble from that perspective. Like, oh, are we going to make it work at this point? Like, the media is already coming at us. We only were able to live on Earth. We didn't figure nothing else out. And so it is what it is. Like, guys, there's so much in the stars. There's so much in the cosmos. It'll be very interesting to see what we can do, where we can go. And I think it's an interesting thing to kind of do. All right, so let's go to the next one. I got to start it because to settle with the SEC that they would the banks would cease providing working capital and Tesla would go bankrupt immediately. So that's like having a gun to your child's head. Uh, so I was forced to concede to the SEC unlawfully. Those bastards. I was forced to admit that I lied for, for to save Tesla's life. And that's the only reason. Don't forget to subscribe below for your daily. See, guys, so he's saying that he was forced by the banks to kind of make an agreement with the SEC, Security Exchange Commission. And, guys, I want to point out that a lot of people don't realize, uh, you know, in economics, there's economic warfare. There's, you know, people who have conflict of interest. There's many things at play. It's a multifaceted, multivariable situation. And so when you're thinking about economics, you think a company just starts up, it only gets support. And, no, that's not True at all. You know, there's going to be people who are already in the industry. Those are people who have objections to your innovation, their competition. And by any means necessary, hook, crook or steel, or even by legitimate forces, they still will oppose you. And so a lot of the times Tesla as a company is dealing with these different types of wars at play, these battles, you know. All right. So. Tesla is attempting to win the war, but it still has to fight a multitude layer of, that, uh, of battles here and there. And so Elon Musk is talking about a time where he had to make a compromise in order to continue to receive working capital from the banks at the time, because I believe this time it was well before today where, you know, Tesla is struggling, especially when it started actually mass producing the Model 3. So net net across the board. These are a lot of things you have to understand. Being an entrepreneur, being a CEO, it's not as easy. And unfortunately, those are one of the things that we have to deal with. But that is life. So I don't even technically know if I could say, unfortunately, that's just the way the cards play. All right. So we have to really be intentive in that and, and, and know what we're doing when we're talking about, hey, man, I'm going to start my own business. Like, hey, it, it comes with things. All right. It's not that easy. Let's continue. Visiting Israel, the Israeli government announced a crucial deal with him. Starlink will only work in the Gaza Strip with the approval of the Israeli government. That deal stands to give Israel even more control over internet access in Gaza as it wages a war against Hamas. And it further illustrates the geopolitical power that Musk now holds thanks to his businesses. Starlink satellites operate in low Earth orbit to provide high-speed broadband to users with terminals on the ground. And so far, the company, which is owned by Musk's SpaceX, has blasted more than 5,000 satellites into space, making its so-called mega constellation extremely hard to disrupt. Stage one landing we deploy. Last year, Musk tweeted that Starlink is meant for peaceful use only, but the technology has played a pivotal role in the war in Ukraine, and it has put a spotlight on Starlink's ability to control and limit access during conflicts when it wants to. Look. You know, that kind of comes with any company, all right, in a lot of different services, whether it's telecommunications, or whether it's drones, whether it's defense equipment, like, that's a part of the game. But Starlink is amazing. It's amazing invention. It's an innovation. Um, it's actually a more effective and efficient internet providership. And most people don't know about Starlink, but it is encompassed inside of SpaceX as of now. And it provides internet in rural areas that don't have the infrastructure. A lot of you guys might have internet access, but it's via under the ground. It's infrastructure underneath the ground. And so you usually have cables. Some of you might be lucky to have fiber optic. Who knows? But the Starlink provides the opportunity for people to get it from the satellite, right? And so if you're receiving it this way, the infrastructure, at least underground, does not have to be built out. That's very cost intensive. That, that's expensive. So a lot of rural areas won't have access to it because it just doesn't make sense from a cost base 
for internet providers to build out that type of underground infrastructure. And so they offer this opportunity to, of course, change that paradigm. And they're able to launch so many satellites into space due to the sheer fact of SpaceX. Remember, I told you about reusable rockets. And so it doesn't cost that much to actually launch satellites into space as much as it used to cost to do it when rockets were disposable, right? You launch it, it's done with. It, it just lands back on Earth and not the way it lands, which is reusable now. So it wasn't a reusable rocket previously. So this is why SpaceX has been able to do tremendous things when it comes down to launching satellites and providing this internet. And so some people are having problems with it. They think you shouldn't have this. Not, no one man should have all this power. A luxury car. Don't buy a Tesla. I'm considering getting a Tesla. They're so expensive for repairs. They know it's a luxury car, so they make sure they upcharge you every chance they get. If you want to go the fastest possible speed, there's a fee to unlock that. It can do it. It's just a... Where? This says create four-digit pin. You got a four-digit pin speed limit. I don't see the proof of you're being charged. Software, <laughs> Governor. They charge you to let it have the ludicrous speed. It's The ludicrous speed. That's slightly different. Ludicrous speed is acceleration, but I don't know. It depends on your model. So this is completely different. So that's like almost having a different type of fine tune on your vehicle that you didn't get. You understand what I'm saying? So that's not quite the same thing. So that's just one example, right? Let's even concede that. It's a, one of the worst money things I think you can make. Well, Teamly cars in fun. general. I mean. See, that's not true. What you think, yeah, that is true. That's what you think. But actually, when you deal with the statistics, when you deal with the data, of course, EVs, not even Tesla specifically, are going to be cheaper because you don't deal with the same things that you deal with when it comes to repairs on ice. Now, one minute he said repairs, but then he said upcharge on speed to get the governor off. But it's not speed. It's ludicrous mode, which is not acceleration, not technically speed. Come on, guys. Unless it's like a beater that's getting you from A and B or just safety measures or room for family, everything beyond that starts becoming a want. That's why so luxury vehicles are, girls are OK if they're, you know, the newest car I've ever owned. And they didn't talk about fuel, right? Like you save massive amounts of money when it comes down to the fuel. In comparison to ice, there's no reason to go back and forth about this damn shit. It just makes sense. Your car space is for actually maintenance. It's not as much as a car, an ice vehicle. Ice vehicle has over a, over a thousand pieces, just a simple wield it and put it together. Teslas do not. They're more basic, they're more simplified. So they have less error less rooms for repair because there's not that many parts. There's not many single parts put together to make a complex machine, to make one item. It's way less, considerably way less. And so therefore, your repairs are extremely lower. Shoot, your repairs are even more trying to figure out what to do in order to fix the car, especially in ICE vehicles, because there's so many pieces that could go wrong was this hybrid yeah and it had one previous owner and i bought it just before all the prices went crazy so i got it Good. for 20 20 21,000. i wanted to build credit so i put twelve thousand down and this is the same guy who's also if you watch my live stream this is the same guy who bought well what did he buy bitcoin ethereum like come on guy i'm sorry i'm not listening to anybody who's out here buying ethereum let's move tesla talk shout out to the big homie matt He's going to review something. Why am I I'm not subscribed on this channel, but the other one? All right, let's go, Mike. Worldwide performance, who brought her Mercedes in for service and was given this by the service advisor? Seriously? This says Tesla recalls nearly all 2 million of its vehicles on the U.S. roads. This is dirty because they know this is just a software update. It's not a... Yeah, so in the news lately, there was a bunch of Tesla vehicles that needed a software update because the FDA, was it the FDA or Transportation Division, whatever authority department in the United States of America, deemed full self-driving to be in a state in which it needs more safety precautions. They need more precautions and more limitations so that people won't misuse and abuse the system okay and so they demanded that tesla update it so that 
people, not because the FSD didn't work, but because how people could misuse it and abuse it. So it has to be updated and changed because of that. And so they took it as, we're going to put out 2 million vehicles need to be recalled. They don't need to be recalled, right? This is technology. They just need to be updated over the air. They don't have to bring the vehicles in. They don't recall. It should be categorized for vehicles that need to be brought back and fixed because it just needs to be updated, right? Bring back, back into one's old mind. Uh, let's say recall cars because you just put, um, what is a recall on a car is issued when a manufacturer or NHTSA determines that a vehicle, equipment, car seat, or tires an unreasonable safety risk or fails to meet a minimum safety standard. Now I met the safety standard and it was not unreasonably safe until they deemed it to be after an investigation due to not the vehicle, the equipment on the car, but due to the misuse of the user. So therefore this is why they want it. And most decisions to conduct a recall or remedy a situation or safety defect are made voluntarily by the manufacturers prior to the involvement of the NHPSA. And so NetNet, -Net, when it came down to this, this is at this point where Tesla said, okay, we're going to do an over-the-air update and update the cars that have the features. This is why it's good to have EVs. If you had ICE vehicles, you have to bring all your goddamn cars back in. Right? So it just proves another point. When it comes down to logistics, when it comes down to repairs and transportation, it's just a cost-efficient vehicle, period. Now, I know this loser would like to say it's expensive and it's a luxury car and all this other nonsense, but it's pretty. It's a minimalistic car, right? And at the same time, these are the good things about it. So I really appreciate that that's there and available because I find that to be very interesting and very beneficial. Like, other vehicles cannot do that. Like. This is something that's not easy to do. Let's see. Let's see what else is going on with Tesla. Let's go back to the big homie, Matt. Fair use. Shout out to Matt. Go check his channel out. Them on a Sunday, unless you have more Sabbath trucks coming. If you didn't have many, you would just deliver it on a weekday because it's cheaper to do that, generally speaking. So... This is good progress, I think. It looks like some of that got their Cybertruck order permitted have now lost it. So you have to act fast if Tesla contacts you saying that you can get your Cybertruck now. If you wait. If somebody caught slipping. Like, hey, look, when it comes out, you better you better be on it. They ain't got time. There's a, a two million. Two million people waiting. They don't got time for you to be lollygagging. So pay attention. Check your email. Cybertruck's coming out that people have lost track of how many are actually new cyber trucks and how many were there before these pictures were taken. This might turn out as good news. After overseeing the investigation into Tesla's autopilot system over the past couple of years, the acting chief of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and Step down. So he's out of here. Get this guy out of here. Hopefully we get somebody who's better. Hopefully we get somebody who's not as bad as that guy, but you never know. He could be worse. And so net net we'll see, but in cooperation with law that limits how long officials can remain in the position. So this guy should have been out. Right. So now he's finally getting out, get to step in autopilot system. They say, uh, one of the things we determined is that drivers are not always paying attention when that system is on as if, Drivers who don't use autopilot also always pay attention. The number one. Yeah, you see, like <laughs> drivers who <laughs> drivers who don't drive with autopilot don't pay attention. Right? They don't drive with FSD. They don't pay attention. Like seriously, people are on their phones. It's ridiculous. I give you guys an example. I was driving from Bangkok. Or excuse me. I was riding in the car with a taxi driver from Bangkok to Pattaya. And the woman was riding or driving, excuse me. And she literally had her phone in her hand in the steering wheel, right? So she kind of had one hand like down here on the wheel and then the other one for the hand where she had 
was holding the phone and she was clicking through this, clicking through that, talking in the chat group, updating, watching the soccer, clicking on soccer clips in the chat group. People were dropping like video clips. She was looking at them. She was, you know, typing in a conversation. Her eyes were on the road like every other 10 seconds. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I didn't argue. I asked her to pull over on the next pit stop. And we were like at the halfway point. And went to my phone, found another driver, paid her for the trip. Even though she didn't take me all the way there, I paid for the whole trip, got out, left. The lady was like, well, why? I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to get some food here. She don't need to know why. I don't need to talk to her about it. Don't need to argue. Don't need to go back and forth. It's ridiculous. One more example. I don't take scooters here in Thailand. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to save because I'm trying to save 10 minutes and $5. I risked myself on, I increased the risk of dying in an accident. No, I'm good. So scooter hop on the back. This guy's driving. He starts texting while he's driving me down the hill. He's texting guys. He's not hitting the button and saying something and then letting the voice message go. He's not sending voice messages. This dude's up here texting with one hand. Why he got one hand on the other handle. This is a bike. You have two hands. Bro, I asked him to pull over. I say, oh, no, I'm going to stop here. He says, oh, what's wrong? I say, no, 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 this is the stop. I get off. I never ride him again. Regardless, they're dangerous in the first place, and I shouldn't have been on at that time. But, bro, you cannot care about your life. Go ahead. But for me, just because you're trying to text somebody, some bullshit. You're not texting them about getting rich. And even if you did, I don't care. You're not about to put my life in danger. So once again, what are the common causes of car accidents? Drivers being distracted by BS. Accidents is distracted driving. And we know very clearly that when people drive with autopilot on, these vehicles are less likely to have an accident, as you can see from the data here. And I need to make a little confession here. When the autopilot or FSD starts nagging me. And see the stats are the stats, man. When people have the autopilot engaged, it's going to be better. Look, man, this is when we normies just don't be honest about how we operate. We abuse it. We're out here trying to message a shorty, arguing with our chick or arguing with our man, whatever the case may be. Y'all out here doing that instead of keeping your eye on the road. You're talking about knickknacks and BS, a cat video, uploading it. This is what you're doing while you're driving. So the FSD is out here saving lives. Come on, man. Happened. I just turn it off. And then I just drive myself. Now, the data say good intentions. Let's go for it. Autoblog.com has this article. Elon Musk is cracking under the pressure of the biggest gamble he's ever taken in his life. And I really need to emphasize that this is a real article. I really have to say it. You'll understand why after I read this one single line for you. SpaceX rockets captivated the public's attention. Even when they blew up, everyone still clapped. Now, listen, guys, this is what I'm talking about. Maybe, you know, the journalist just doesn't understand anything. Okay. I don't know what it really is, so I'm not going to lay out an allegation of conspiracy but what, uh, or, or misconduct. What I am going to say is, People clapped because there's milestones in scientific experimentation, right? And so when Starship was launching, it launched. That's progress, all right? This is a heavy ship. A Starship is way more heavier than Falcon 9. Like, its payload and what it can carry to orbit is ridiculously high in comparison to Falcon 9. So it launching is successful. And then when it launches, 
when the actual Starship moves into phase two of the launch and it passes. This is great also. Then when it goes to phase three and it fails and blows up, that's the part where it's still successful. There's stage one, stage two, stage three. Now, no one was going to collide, possibly, if the thing was just sitting there and it just blew up. But also, being scientists and not reporters, they also understand that trial and error, it comes from error. Error helps you figure out the trial and the trail. So you, this is why, instead of actually just being honest about science or actually knowing about science, I'm not saying they're being dishonest, they could see, oh, well, people are still clapping because there's been some scientific advancement made here, possibly, let me dive deeper into the details. No, 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 no. They attempt to project that people are just cult-like and they're clapping even if it blows up. That's not the truth. Oh, boy. Imagine inventing a light bulb, but the first light bulb that you light up explodes. Oh, what a failure you are. That rocket that Elon launched is a rocket that can actually help us realistically colonize Mars. It's a big deal. After not pooping for three Very days, big deal. my mom was rushed to the hospital. Very big deal. Nobody cares. Either. Very big deal. To get the Model 3 out, clearly you wait on Musk. This is writing about what happened before about Tesla, but look at how arrogantly this is written. And he was not subtle about it. On Tesla's first quarter earnings call, he cut off one analyst's basic financial question, saying that boring bonehead questions are not cool. He got so frustrated that he ditched the analysts entirely and started taking questions from fans posting on YouTube. Eventually, he even begged skeptical Tesla investors to please sell our stock. When yeah, that's what I like about it, man. Hey, look, man, if you're skeptical and you don't believe in the company of Tesla, Elon doesn't have a problem with telling you to leave. Like, because what's annoying is, and I completely get it, what and what's very annoying, and he was just like, sell the stock, you know, make, make your return and get out. And it's not to be a D, but it is to tell you and inform you, look, bro, we are attempting to make gains in science. It, this, is, this is not easy. And if you're here only to be like, well, what's the finance? What's the finance? It's like, okay, that's important. The finance is a post that you can get them. I mean, not necessarily SpaceX because it is a private company, so you can't demand for it also too. But even if it was public, like something like Tesla, a lot of people are just focused on that. That's what's wrong with Ross. Ross is out here, and this is an analysis, a hedge fund manager, but he's always coming at Elon when he doesn't do something traditional like all other CEOs would do. But then he wants an exceptional company like Tesla to be what Tesla is without Elon being exceptionally well as a leader he is. Like he, he doesn't move like Tim Cook. He doesn't move like other CEOs. So stop always attempting to put him underneath that pressure cooker. Like get out the stock, sell then, buy. And I mean like not be U Y, but buy B Y E. Get out of here. Just go. Get to stepping. You don't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Because what we're trying to do is innovate and create. What you're trying to do is go back to some BS and be like, well, we're, 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 what's this looking like? What's this looking like? They're posted, idiot. Go check out the finances. When Musk is at his most hungry for cash, he tends to bite the hand that feeds. Bro, I'm look. I put a lot of money in Tesla. I'm good. He ain't bite my hand. Let him do what he do. Let Tesla do what they do. Let Elon Musk do what he does. Like the company is doing great. Who the hell am I to start backseat entrepreneuring, CEOing? People out here backseat CEOing. Like, bro, you was nowhere. Where was you when I was building the company when it was nothing? Where was you when I invested all the money I had left into Tesla? And this is what Elon did. Where were they when he had all his earnings from PayPal? All the money he ever made, and he put the last of what he had in SpaceX and Tesla. Split the baby. Like, both of them were dying. Both of them were about to fail. Both of them were about to go bankrupt. And he took the last of his own money 
and put it in both companies. Everything he had was on the line. Concepts were proven at this point. There was no success in the eyes of these normies. It was the worst time. It was a dark hour. Shoot, it was a dark quarter. <laughs> but now they're like, you bit the hand that feeds you, man. Get the hell out of here. Bite the hand that feeds. We are talking about 2018. Tesla stock in 2018. Was there a single mention that Tesla stock since then more than 10 x No. Not a single mention. And you know what's that big? See, and that's the funny part. It's already 10 x And you keep coming at me about some stocks and financials. The company is 10x. Y'all done well as investors. Shut up. That, that, that could be annoying. Like, it's already unreasonably high from Elon's perspective. He says this a lot. And you're still coming at him. Crazy. Always coming with the stock biggest gamble that supposedly elon musk just took it's uh basically telling the advertisers to go slowly now we're going to read this and kind of end out on this and thanks to matt for giving us some good content so shout outs to matt like i said go subscribe to him guys i love tesla I, i'm going to talk about it way more i'm going to be doing more podcasts or more live videos or clips about tesla just because it's a company that I'm heavily invested in. There's so many things always happening. And I think if the masses are ignorant or at least don't know much information about Tesla when it comes down to it. So I want to be able to provide that information so we can look over a, a kind of one of the greatest companies in American history and one of the greatest African-Americans in history, Elon Musk. But the company is great. Uh, there, I got a video about the cyber truck, about the manufacturing process. We're going to go over that and see how difficult it is. There's going to be another video with Sandy Moreau. He goes actually through the actual factory. And you can see the complexities of the actual Tesla factory. And I mean, it's just, I mean, the top talent at Tesla is ridiculous. But let me read this real quick. The biggest gamble Elon Musk ever took was put in everything or every last cent he had in SpaceX and Tesla during the great financial crisis. During the great financial crisis, guys. So that's reporters talking about a gamble for some stupid thing called Twitter, allegedly or previously called Twitter, but his biggest gamble ever was SpaceX and Tesla, right? And during the great financial crisis when Tesla was on the brink of bankruptcy, chances of success were slim. Twitter has been the biggest investment from a total dollar amount perspective, but not the biggest gamble. If Elon cracked under pressure, he wouldn't have founded, co-founded, or been CEO of $7 billion companies. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but seven guys. Creators are thriving on X more than they ever have. The old Twitter didn't pay content creators any ad revenue, nothing. Now they do. Come on. These constant media campaigns to try and paint Elon as failing are tiresome and old. According to the media, X died for the 69 millionth time this week. I have a good feeling that years down the line, we'll look at X as another one of Elon's success stories. I agree 100%. I hope you guys go over there and follow me on X at Sean R. Oliver. Shout outs to that. Hopefully I can't put it up on the screen, unfortunately. But what I can do is share. Go check me out. Obstacles, the opportunity. You know, we over there. Right. The man behind obstacles, the opportunity, YouTube combat veteran, ex-diplomat, ex-FBI contract and accredited investor, online influencer living in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm going to definitely put more stuff on my actual, you know, Twitter. But go over there and follow me on Twitter, guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to drop the link. I'm going to have it actually in the description below this video. So please go and find me over there. I'm definitely going to be trying to build out my platform over there on X because I'm with Elon all day. And, you know, I kind of kind of say things that are kind of edge on the edge. It's a little bit edgy. So a little bit edgy is not for YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But a little bit edgy is definitely for Twitter, X. And so I think it has a bright future. So shout outs to everybody. Thanks for coming through on this Tesla talk and see you on the next one. Peace out.